my um, business is Bluebird Sky, like Kylie uh, said, and um, my focus is on strategy. Um, and um, I have taken a fairly circuitous route to, to get here um, through different job roles and careers um, from education to publishing to workforce development. Um, but the theme that ties all of it together is my passion for strategy. Um, I'm an optimist by nature and I love to imagine what could be. Um, and so that's that's what's always drawn me to strategy. So I've been um, uh, working in this area exclusively for the last five years now. And, um, and in that time, I've, I've done a lot of thinking and exploring in um, different approaches to developing strategy. And um, as a, probably a lot of you have experienced in your um, roles, you know, as part of teams developing strategy, um, there were probably things that you enjoyed about the strategic planning process, um, things that you found frustrating, um, as did I. And so, um, through um, my process, I've uh, become familiar and now certified as a um, workshop leader in one particular approach to strategy called strategic doing. And that's going to be the focus of today. Um, I wanna create awareness or help you, um, if you're not a bit, uh, already familiar with strategic doing, give you a, an overview of what it is and how it could be applied. Um, and it shares some features in common with say agile, like software development approaches. Um, and um, it's very flexible and adaptable to a lot of different um, circumstances. So we'll walk through what that looks like. Um, the first thing I wanna do, there we go, is see if maybe we can get, I can get some input from, from all of you. I'm, I'm interested in, in the experiences of the people on this, this call or the Zoom right now um, with strategy. Um, what has been your experience? Um, I've put um, examples of strategic plan covers um, just from Iowa universities um, here, but there's strategic plans all over the place. Um, and so can anybody share either in chat or by unmuting and just um, uh, talking about it briefly, your experiences with strategy development and what you found um, helpful, what you find easy, what seems difficult about the process. I'd just like to get a little input from your own experiences. Anybody wanna chime in? I'm checking the chat too. Let's see, does anybody have an experience where you um, got a, a group of people who were excited about a new strategic approach and then um, had, and then just went and implemented it? Has anybody uh, like found good ways to do that? Or conversely, if you've uh, stumbled over the, how do you make this happen part of it? I'm seeing a, a, a comment here. Thank you so much, Brenda. Um, so she's talking about a challenge and being realistic about what can be accomplished while also ensuring the strategy will stretch you. That's a great point. You don't, I mean, the point of going through the exercise is to grow, is to stretch, but how do you balance that with what's realistic um, and possible? Um, Amy, thank you for your comment. She says getting buy-in from all is sometimes a struggle. So that's another great point. Um, even if change is positive, um, it's frequently kind of scary or, or um, threatening or um, hard in, in, a, in a variety of ways. So how do you help people come together and feel invested and bought in? Um, thanks, those are great points. Um, I appreciate that. Okay, so those are actually some of the ideas that will uh, kind of flowed up from my description um, and sharing this process with you. Um, this uh, next idea here is um, uh, just to kind of give some context. Um, I ride bikes a lot and uh, sometimes it's with groups on a long, like a all day ride or, um, and I, for a time was riding with a group of people who would ride, 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 stop, take a break and everybody's chatting and 
still have, you know, a long way to go. And at some point somebody would say, well, talking about it ain't getting it done. And so it's time to get back on the bikes and go. And, and so that's something that is frequently um, a challenge of the strategic planning process, because um, I, I find that a lot of times it is exciting to talk about what could be the possibilities. But then when you contemplate a change that means for your day-to-day -day or your organization, um, then that's where it gets hard and you have to figure out how to get it done. So as I mentioned in my um, time thinking about uh, strategy, different approaches to developing strategy, how it's done successfully, one of the things I've discovered is strategic doing, which was really developed by a man named um, Ed Morrison, who's just fantastic to read about, follow on LinkedIn. Um, and so if that's, uh, if this is interesting to you, you may, you may wanna look him up and the team, um, he is not the only person, but he um, has um, a great team of people who are doing a lot of research and a lot of training um, in this approach. But it's a strategy discipline that's designed for open, loosely connected networks. So I wanna point out a couple of um, things here. You'll notice that, um, there is the word discipline in there. Um, and, and that's very closely connected to the idea of habits. And so um, part of making lasting change is developing new reliable habits. And so that's one thing that this approach to strategy helps teams do. Um, and so then another important point um, in, in this slide is that idea of networks. You know, as, as we all know, organizations are typically flattening. Um, the things that we need to accomplish in business, in society, in government um, are increasingly complex and depend on our making connections with multiple networks of people and resources and ideas in order to solve problems. And so, um, and that's true even within, and uh, let's say a, a corporation, a, a, a business, you, you t almost never have a complex um, problem or issue that you're tackling that does not involve people from other networks within your organization. Another, um, aspect of strategic doing is that it enables people to form action-oriented collaborations quickly, move them toward measurable outcomes, and make adjustments along the way. Now, this definitely looks a lot like agile, if that's a, a, um, an environment you're, or an approach you're familiar with. Um, but I wanna point out a couple things here too. So it's people first. Um, none of this is possible without people. And that goes back to, um, the, the idea that um, Amy brought up about getting people to buy in is sometimes difficult. Um, and then there's this um, action-oriented element to strategic doing. Obviously, there's doing in the name of this approach. And so it is very much focused on action. Um, and I see a comment from Tommy, thank you very much, um, who says spending time making a plan can take a lot of time and resources, but actually executing it and following it doesn't always happen. And so, yes, that's that's a very common complaint that people have about the strategy process. And so that's where this idea of action orientation comes in and the idea of collaboration. Um, and then of course, any good plan is going to have some measurable outcomes that you're targeting. And then a unique, feature of this that is so important for the environment we're in today where things are changing so rapidly is that idea of making adjustments along the way. Um, because um, the world we live in today where you're making your plan is not going to be the world in which you're executing your plan. It may change slightly or it may change dramatically, but it's not going to be the same. So how do you take that strategy and implement it even while things are changing? So that's um, another critical element of this approach. So, um, as I mentioned, I'm I'm really focusing on the idea of complex challenges um, and tangled problems, wicked challenges. And so, um, 
you, it's helpful here to think in terms of technical versus adaptive um, uh, challenges. So when you when you're thinking about technical challenges, which are important to address, um, those are challenges that are more typically solved or that are able to be solved with knowledge and expertise. There's generally a solution that's um, identifiable. Um, and adaptive challenges are those that are much more ambiguous, much um, more complex, do not have a right answer or a um, given solution. It's a, a process of discovery and experimentation to really address them effectively. Um, and I'll give uh, one or two examples. And then I'd, I'd love to hear some ideas from you as well, from your own um, workplace or even other um, organizations you might be involved in the, uh, addressing issues. So one, one issue I've uh, been involved in supporting is uh, a Northern County of uh, Iowa was, um, the, the public health department was leading the effort to look at ways to um, address the uh, opioid use and misuse. And so in order to effectively address that issue, the public health department could not sit down by itself and come up with a solution. They brought to the table um, social services, health care, mental health care, law enforcement, education, um, uh, you know, housing support, all kinds of people involved in this issue to, to sit down and say, what are our resources that we have to address this? What do we see from our perspective? What's, and, and put all of that together. Um, another one from corporate America would be um, a, a project I was involved in um, quite uh, a while ago now, but to develop a series of um, tests to measure English language um, skill in the workplace for an international audience. So starting in Europe and moving in elsewhere. So um, it would be, it was to be a computer delivered test. So we're looking at English language skills, we're looking at um, computer software development, we're looking at um, issues of privacy and how privacy law varies from country to country. We're looking at all kinds of, uh, um, what businesses really have a need for this. So again, pulling together people within the corporation and then outside of the corporation to really get a good handle on how to develop this um, and address this issue. Um, does anybody have anything that you want to either put in the chat or call out um, uh, as, a, as a potential issue that, you, that comes to mind that might fall into this category of complex challenges to address? And it's fine if you don't, we'll have, have plenty of opportunities um, as we go. I'm gonna keep the chat up. So if you do have something you wanna add there, I will, I will see it and be glad to, to raise it. So um, as you just keep in mind, oh, I wanna give one more example. Um, and this is not one I was personally involved in, but there's a, a good example from British Air, Air, um, Airways, Airlines. Um, they, they, um, had a, um, a situation where um, what they wanted to do was address the problem they were experiencing, which is not unique to them, um, of people ending up at their destinations without their luggage. Um, and so keep that in mind. So in, in, it's a, it's a, in some ways there are technical uh, challenge aspects to that problem, but then um, as we'll talk about as we go, there are also, um, more adaptive challenges, uh, aspects to that problem too. So stepping back, strategy in general, anytime you're talking about strategy, it boils down to these two questions on the screen. Where are we going and how will we get there? But that's pretty much it. Um, however, um, as you see with this graphic on the screen, um, despite the fact that that seems like a pretty straightforward set of questions, the path to um, answering is really not typically very straight. Um, and so on this screen, we're really seeing an example of um, a more traditional thought about strategic planning, especially in organizations that were not um, experiencing a lot of rapid change, where you pull people together, 
you sit down around the table and you think, 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 and then you plan. Um, and, then, then you, and then you make your plan and you do. Strategic doing is a much more iterative process. You go through a process of uh, thinking and then planning um, what you're going to do and you try it out as a, as a bit of an experiment in a disciplined um, meth methodical way and you see what you learn from that and you go back and you check your, your strategy and your plan and you see if you would need to adapt and then um, continue that cycle so that you don't waste a whole lot of time going in a direction that in the end turns out to be non-productive. Um, but what's challenging is how do you help a group of people develop habits um, and processes that allow this to happen in a productive and somewhat controlled manner? So um, we always start with a positive framing question. Um, there's an example of one on your screen, but the idea here is that um, just like when you're driving a car or wearing a bike, um, you go in the direction of your eyes. So if you're looking at the obstacle you're trying not to hit, you're gonna most likely end up steering in that direction. So um, the, a rule of this uh, strategic doing process is to really keep that um, framing question that helps you envision that goal, that future you're trying to build clearly in mind. And so breaking those two questions we talked about down into four, strategic doing um, talks about what could we do with what we know and with what we have at our disposal. And then going through some evaluation to determine what should we do. And then further refining that to a decision about what will we do. And then that final um, uh, question there is not one that's easily understood to somebody who's not familiar with strategic doing, but what's our 30-30? And that's the answer to on this screen that how you come up with the, um, that flow of um, experimentation and learning. So you as a group establish what you will do for the next 30 days, typically. It can be different um, intervals of time depending on your needs. Um, everybody makes a commitment to what the action they will take during that time. And it could be an hour, it could be more than that, but everybody has a defined action they've committed to and you do it, come back together, you share what you have done, what you've learned from it, you evaluate what's happened so far, and then you as a group determine what you'll do in the next 30 days. So you look back 30 days and look forward 30 days. And that's where that 30, 30 or you know, 2020, whatever you end up using or needing for your, um, your initiative. Um, and so there are 10 rules that um, are taught to those who are in um, using strategic doing to, to do their, um, to address their challenges. And this one on the screen, civility seems very common sense. Um, but because it's so important, it is um, always discussed explicitly. And that is, it's very difficult to come up with um, meaningful um, change, get that buy-in that was brought up earlier in, in the conversation, um, without a deep sense of trust among those around the table. So those around the table have to say, yes, I'm here willingly. I'm here to, I'm committed to following through on what I say I'm going to do. I'm going to listen and um, I'm going to contribute. Um, and all of that builds mutual respect. And that is the foundation for the rest of the process, which is splashed up here on this screen all at once. But I just want to have, let you get a sense of there are 10 rules that create a discipline. And, and it's, um, very intuitive, but intuition doesn't mean easy. Um, and so it takes practice. And, and as the groups um, engaging in strategic doing work through it, they find that they get to action more easily and um, more incrementally. And then you are set up to experiment, learn, experiment, learn. And, and so you can um, take action early you can fail early, you can learn early, and, and that builds to um, an effective outcome or a, a successful outcome. 
So um, one last thing that I wanna just show you before we wrap up here is that there are a lot of tools that are um, provided through strategic doing that help groups with the discipline, with the habit building. And so on the screen here is just an example of a, a way to um, both document what's being done and communicate with people because as the work um, continues, you will likely bring in new people, add to the network to, to address different facets of what you're working on. And so being able to document and communicate is, is very important. And I see that um, Aaron, I think it's Aaron Wilson, um, had a comment about launching an enterprise-wide uh, leadership program. And so um, getting um, all kinds of people involved from frontline leaders and, and others, and then a lot of different systems, computer and other technology, something to uh, coordinate all of that work is going to be very important. Um, so then you just have um, action teams that are um, all familiar with the process. They all are um, empowered to take action and make decisions. And, um, and the, the beautiful thing is that everyone has the same framing question, the same end goal, the same metrics in mind so that they can be confident that as they make those interim decisions and make those experimentations, they're all um, aiming in the right, in the same direction. So um, I know that we're out of time, um, but I do want to just let you know that if you have questions about any aspect of this, um, or if you've got questions about whether there's a problem that you have in mind that would be a, a problem that would be lending itself well to the, the approach of strategic doing, feel free to put it in the chat or um, send a note to um, the, the Kirkwood team. Um, and um, and it'd be a great to have another conversation about the possibilities there. So um, I don't see any questions popping up in the chat right now. So I will just end with a big thank you for your time. And, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more this morning. Thank you very much for having me.